Hi, my name is Elena Put, and I wear several different hats uh, at this conference. One of them is that I spend about 50% of my time working for MERSICOR as an advisor on peace building and youth programs. And I focus particularly on helping field teams, MERSICOR field teams, to introduce technology into their field programs. And at the moment, we're looking at how we can help uh, teams that are working in conflict or post-conflict areas to use crisis maps, um, or to use mapping technologies in general. So I'm going to give you two examples of two uh, crisis maps that we have set up. And then I'm going to uh, tell you what I think are the three main lessons they've taught us about using mapping for uh, field teams. The first, one, the first of these uh, programs is for the Iraqi Center for Negotiation and Conflict Management, which is a team of mediators um, that uh, intervene in local disputes in Iraq and which MERSICOR has been supporting. And this network of mediators uh, had been collecting a lot of data already on the disputes that they were intervening on. But it was all in paper in their offices, um, and it was very difficult for them to see any patterns or any trends in the disputes that they were intervening in and to learn from those patterns and those trends. So what we did is we digitized that data in order to give them an idea of some of the trends that they could begin to see in their own data. So what you're seeing here are, is, a, is a map of Iraq. Um, the dots are the disputes in which they intervened that related to water issues. And the background layer is uh, a layer of the areas that have the greatest water scarcity. So the red means uh, more scarce. So very quickly what this showed them was that the water disputes that they were intervening in weren't happening in the places with the greatest water scarcity. Scarcity wasn't the issue that was coming up in the water disputes, it was access. That's just one example. We built the, the system using CrowdMap, which is a new Shahidi product that most of you probably know, very intuitive, very easy to use. Uh, we backed that up in order to have a bit more analysis uh, capabilities with uh, a pre-prepared Excel spreadsheet that just made it very easy for the team to produce standard graphs uh, to allow them to compare different groups uh, just by downloading the CSV data and plugging it into these pre-prepared spreadsheets. So that's the, the Iraq project. In Libya, um, MERSICOR is, uh, is working on a big protection program. They monitor a number of IDP sites. Uh, most of them are in urban settings. Uh, this is a picture of one of the, one of the IDP sites. And a lot of these uh, IDP sites require uh, humanitarian assistance still, um, and many of them are also um, prone to security incidents of different types. Um, so again, the, the team was already collecting a lot of information on protection issues in Libya with their teams going out to monitor these sites, but they didn't have a particularly good way to digitize it. So Raquel actually did half my job because we're using um, a combination of uh, Google Fusion Tables and Google Crisis Map. This is a Google Crisis Map. It's showing you um, the latest the distributions of food in the past year. It's color-coded by which quarter that food distribution happened, and the big blobs are the places where the MERSICOR team feels there's a food security issue. So again, it was a, it's a very quick way for the teams to take all of their data and get a snapshot, a snapshot of what the patterns of need in these IDP sites are like. Um, as I said, we've used uh, fusion tables to do much of the digitizing of the data. It's a very long questionnaire, so something like a crowd map wasn't really suitable for such a long questionnaire. And then what we do is with the fusion table, we generate a number of different views of that fusion table that get layered on a Google crisis map. And all of it is hosted on a very simple Google site that is currently password protected, um, but will probably eventually be open to the public. So with the, all of this, um, there's three things that I've learned um, about how to make uh, crisis maps useful to teams. The first one is make it less work. Um, one of the Libya team recently sent me an email and said, you know, this is super cool. I've just managed to do what would normally be a report that takes me three days of collating data in about half an hour. Um, and this is, this is crucial. These are teams that are working in very high-pressure environments already. Um, often, uh, data projects take up too much of their time. If you make it less work, then it's more likely that it will be adopted. The second one is look at what's already being done and adopt what already works. Um, one of the things that was crucial in both the Iraq and the, and the Libya um, examples for us was that the teams were already collecting data. So they already understood the value of collecting and analyzing data. What we could do very easily with the data already there and their, their understanding of the trends already there was to demonstrate added value by showing them patterns that they hadn't previously spotted. Like the two I gave you were two patterns that they hadn't seen before. 
And then the last one is be very honest about what the crisis map can do and what it can't do. It's not going to give them final answers, but it is going to start a conversation, and hopefully it's going to challenge some assumptions. In Libya, it has challenged some of the assumptions that the Mercy Corps team had about which ethnic groups were in greater need. Um, I think this is probably the most important thing that it can do for mapping uh, for field teams uh, using crisis maps. So thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.